All right, guys, welcome back. It's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. And today, for Finance Friday, we have a video about Blackstone Jay-Z Rock Nation acquiring CGC collectibles uh, like this card right here, the CGC Mock Sapphire 8.5. These collectibles, by the way, are all on our eBay store on eBay auction. No reserve right now, so don't miss out. But yeah, this video is going to be quite interesting. I'm going to break down what I think about the whole acquisition. Um, and uh, the, the, this is huge because it's a $700 billion publicly traded company acquiring uh, the largest comic book grading company and also um, obviously growing in the sports car grading, Magic and Pokemon grading. With PSA getting out of the whole arena of grading, or uh, in terms of the uh, being publicly traded, it is huge because now there's more money being backed here than ever before. What's going to happen? We're going to analyze it. But again, bid on these on eBay auction on our store right now. The link is below. Enjoy the video. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com. All right, guys, welcome back. It's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com, and today is Finance Friday. I haven't done one of these for a while, and I'm really excited to get started. So this video is all about a company called Blackstone. It is on the New York Stock Exchange. I think it's BX. They are not to be confused with BlackRock. BlackRock is the mega company. It's the biggest in the world by a long shot of uh, investing in basically debt. They own uh, many, many areas, such from casino stuff to uh, uh, real estate to anything, really. They are a $9 trillion company, but Blackstone is actually close to 650 I I'd call it just $700 million for easiness on the title, but they are um, an asset-based company also. Um, and Rock Nation, which is owned by Jay-Z, uh, the big-time rapper, also has invested in a company called CGC, uh, which is Certified uh, Collectible CG, CG, Certified Gaming Collect Certified Collectibles Group. What? Oh, All right, looked it up. It's Certified Collectibles Group, which is the parent company that was acquired by Blackstone. Uh, which is CCG, which is very confusing because that's, uh, I don't know, collectible card gaming? I don't know. Okay, anyway, they have a lot of companies. Uh, I'll show you an example. Hold on a second. Look at this. This is a BGS 8.5 Unlimited Mox Sapphire. If you want to bid on it, it is under the CGC Universal Grade. And there's no subgrades on this. They usually have subgrades right here. Um, but uh, the serial numbers in the back right here, really nice, snazzy case. I'll be doing reviews about this company here soon. I also have the opportunity to go to uh, CGC's uh, facility, meet Matt Quinn, a, a good guy out there. Uh, he is the head grading uh, guy and also showed us around the shop. And we opened an alpha starter, which so you'll want to see that video here coming up. But that's not the reason why we're doing the video. I want to talk more about the acquisition and I want to break this down. So first things first, I, I feel like a lot of people need to just understand that the hierarchy of all this is that PSA, Professional Sports uh, professional sports Authenticator, now they're just called PSA. Um, they were acquired by, they were, they went public and their bigger, their parent company was Collector's Universe or CU. And that was public onto the NASDAQ, on the stock exchange. And they went, uh, they, they recently were, went out of being public, bought by a private company um, and by a lot of different wealthy individuals. Um, but I definitely will tell you that with Black Rock, Blackstone uh, involved with seven, almost $700 billion of like assets, it changes the playing field because it has so much more capital backing than, um, you know, I think the private company that's involved uh, by a long shot. Now, what does that mean for the grading, 
stuff like that. I don't think I don't think operationally anything will change. I don't think you're going to see necessarily um, you know you know the the industry changing because their brands are already grown so much. They have their comic book grading, they have the, the stamps, the the uh, um, the coins and the paper money. They're already huge in that. Um, but now they're getting into the Pokemon and the Magic the Gathering grading, and also now. They will be at the National um, coming up end of uh, July and early August uh, for the Sports Collectors Convention at in Chicago. So if they're doing that also, they're going to have even a larger presence because with this public uh, – being, being a public company um, or being part of a public entity, they're going to have a lot more capital to help them grow additional businesses. So I think operationally it just – allows them to grow easier uh, you know their debt they don't have to worry as much about debt obviously and they can it can accelerate growth have more resources now I I think the big consensus for magic is that people really don't like the holders for CGC compared to PSA and Beckett and um, that's that's kind of like to me that's a little bit honestly a kind of a lame thing so I'll show you an example this is this a basic PSA card right here. And these are thinner. You see how thin they are right there? And then you have, uh, let's see, a Beckett card. And these are all, by the way, on our eBay store right now, an eBay auction. Um, or if they're not, they're going to be. Look, how, look at this. This is a Beckett holder. This is the PSA holder. Huge difference. And here's CGC. Here's CGC. So the, let's talk about the length. And this is not a review of CGC, but it's 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 kind of important to understand that they're kind of similar holder to PSA holder in terms of length and thickness. Beckett obviously wins. It's almost as if you have a CGC and a PSA. They're pretty much identical. Look at that. And then, you know, you talk about the, uh, the actual uh, surface area. They're all about the same. They all fit in that same realm. Beckett's obviously thicker. And then CGC and PSA about the same. Now, some people are like, well, Dan, what I really like about the Beckett holders is that they just have these fancy silver looking or gold looking, you know, let's see, gold, gold, fancy gem mint quality, whatever, right? Okay, okay, fair enough. And I think that's all debatable. Um, obviously, CGC also, they pride themselves on doing subgrades just like Beckett. So Beckett has subgrades also, right? CGC typically has subgrades right here. I don't know. This may have been a selection where you don't have to have it. And actually, I think if you look at what Beckett's actually doing, they're actually going towards no subgrades as an offering. It's I think it's like $5 less or so in the grading fee or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure what they're exact. I think it might be a little bit le uh, more or less, less than that from the subgrade grading fee. So. I think a lot of people like that cleaner look like PSA. I mean, what's nice about the PSA is that you have just like a simple, uh, let me take a car that's, this can of lava. It's just simple clean, you have a nine, right? Or if it's a 10, for example, like this uh, Field of Dreams, just beautiful, nice and clean, just 10, right? You don't have to deal with all the riffraff of all the, the stuff written on there. So that is a big difference. So another thing <coughs> to understand is that PSA has become is always and will be the P, the sports leader of all certified collectibles. Um, this is a huge thing to understand. Main reason why is because of their they were the first and they were the best. You know, I think there was a company called there's a company called SGC uh, out of Pennsylvania or something. They tried to kind of be a competitor of Beckett and also uh, they were pretty unsuccessful. They're still around, but still definitely has not reached Beckett level. And so Beckett um, has always got the uh, brand name as having this, uh, hey, we're the modern day collector level. And they have this pristine grade. So Beckett 10 is not exactly, is not a PSA 10. It's actually uh, considered a Beckett 9.5. So I kind of give you this brief outline of kind of these different variances of the collectibles because I think ultimately when you have an acquisition, the question is how can the big question is how can the CGC brand um, take more market share and grow business in the industry itself? There's two things: will it grow industry for collectibles, or and will there be enough 
market share for them to take away from other brands? And those are two questions I want to answer. Number one, I think that collectibles itself, Magic, Pokemon, all that stuff, sports cards, it's exploded. So I don't think CGC being publicly you know, bought out or even starting their sports card grading, uh, I, think, I think all it really does is it gives you uh, uh, collectors another option. That is really trusted because in the comic book world, CGC is really the juggernaut. They are the gold standard of all collecting. So they've I think they had like a action comics Batman that sold for like three point two million or three million dollars, something like that, or was that a Superman? I don't remember. Whatever. I think that the Batman was a detective comics. Anyway, for you comic book guys, I messed up. But the re reality is their comics are selling for millions of dollars, right? So they are they are the largest a PSA Beckett. They don't, you know, I think Beckett's trying to do some comic book rating, but they haven't even gotten close. So, reality is market share. There is market share to be taken now. But we're talking about sports and collectibles. I kind of feel like with sports, there's definitely more ability for diversification because there's so many more sports cards compared to older Magic cards. Um, I will say that newer Pokemon, newer. Uh, magic cards, yes. You, if you want to grade those, um, you're going to have a lot more um, diverse. You can have a lot more brands come into play and wouldn't really affect the values. And in fact, I'm not really a fan of grading modern, modern day Magic the Gathering collectibles because they don't have a much of a premium and they're really easy to get high grades. So what's the point? Um, Beckett, obviously, guys, as you know, is the the primary leader of all of the high the the grading for magic, right? So it's going to be very difficult for CGC to come in and take place of that, even with an acquisition from Blackstone, because even if you pump a lot of money into it, what's going to happen? It requires, I've been saying this in other videos before, like why is it PSA? Why is it, because PSA is so, has so much uh, clout in the sports car industry stuff. Why haven't they taken over? And the sequence of events was PSA used to be bigger than Beckett in terms of magic rating. I started grading with them in the beginning and they had the PSA set registry. It was really, really awesome. Uh, Beckett didn't have that at the time. Uh, the PSA 10s were, the PSA 9s, PSA 10s were the most valued uh, commodity. And then I started selling some Beckett ones just to kind of see how they would grade. And lo and behold, people started buying more Beckett. They, they like the subgrades, they like the pristine thing, they like the snazzy stuff. I don't think, Though that necessarily was the problem. I think PSA um, just kind of, you know, had a different system. And one of the hardest things that PSA had was they had a declared value pricing system. One of the most challenging ways to actually submit a card was you all have to know the declared value based on what they felt, not based on what you felt. Uh, because obviously you could manipulate it. PSA. They have a like a price guide called the SMR, the Sports Market Report, that they, they use, and they need to kind of have. You know, I think if you submitted a car that was like twenty or five or ten grand higher, or, or sorry, if it's like hundred thousand dollar declared value or more, you have to pay a five thousand dollar, five thousand dollar grading service. I mean. You can't do that. I mean, you can't do that for a sustaining growth of a business of a thing, but I don't think that's what they want. I think they're used to using the sports pricing towards gaming cards and they kind of just want to keep that. And that's how you keep the populations low because people have seen that Beckett populations are so high compared to PSA. But you have to understand, people don't really submit to PSA as they used to. So the, the question is, did the CGC actually even um, you know, CGC's current pricing is not based off declared value, which is a plus, I have to say. It matches Beckett's. Uh, it's easier to figure out. I'm not saying, you know, I think CGC is actually more affordable, actually. So go to their website. I'll try to put the links of everything um, in the link below. But I think that you're going to find a lot more similarities with Beckett and, um, than you are with PSA. All right, so we jumped around a little bit. So um, let's talk about... Like So this video is more primarily going to be about the whole Blackstone buyout. So Rock Nation, uh, which is owned by Jay-Z, the big rapper, um, he's an investor of it. Why does that even matter? It probably doesn't matter much because he's not necessarily on the board, I don't think. 
Um, but I think what matters is that you have big names investing in different areas of life, like uh, into uh, collectibles. Uh, for example, Kevin Durant uh, has uh, a, a kind of a firm or something called the Boardroom or something that is invested into making like a podcast or has different interest in having stake into sports collectibles now. So they're having that conversation about collecting and investing in sports collectibles. I think all of this is good. I think all of this is like having um, like from music investing like Jay-Z into Blackstone and also C CGC and such like that. It just produces good news and big, you know, good karma for the industry. It's like it's, it's, it's versus saying, hey, you know, these people are denouncing collectibles or it's bad or it's not like that. There's different people from different areas. And I think this all falls back to what I was saying before about nostalgia wins, you know, um, and also uh, an unregistered assets also is winning. Um, what I mean by that is that, you know, obviously uh, sports cars, baseball cars, magic cars, whatever. They're all um, Pokemon cards. They're all non-registered assets. You can have these collectibles and just put these, you know, stack them up, you know, stack them up, just keep them in your basement, you know, hide, hide them away from the government, whatever. You can, you know, you can put this in a safe, you know, whatever you want, right? You can do whatever you want with them. You know, cards like Jazan de Jin, just iconic figures of Magic the Gathering. I mean, when they're graded like this, they become this great preservation for your family. And then if something happens, um, you know, to you, to you, your family has something that is uh, authenticated. You know, if they want to sell it on eBay, on Heritage auctions, e uh, Facebook auctions, whatever the hell they want to do it now, they are protected. So there's definitely an advantage towards that. I think a lot of people have to understand that when you have a CGC coming in, um, grading the magic cards and now ba back with the bigger company, I think marketing wise, all they're going to do is spend more money, pump, pump more diversity into the market and it's not like the SGC diversity um, and also other brands I'm not gonna I'm not hating on SGC I just never liked them as much I also never uh, there's a lot of other smaller companies like GAI which was started by Steve Rocky back in the day P PSA and I think his name was Mike Brown or Mike Mike something uh, you guys can put the comments below but he was with the head grader guy for PSA years ago and basically what they did was they created another grading company, GAI, Global Grading. They did pack grading, stuff like that, and, and some of their stuff is accepted. But all in all, PSA and BGS are really the leaders. So when CGC now is backed by a larger, you know, almost $700 billion, $700 billion company, it just produces validity that a solid third player into this grading, company, grading market where collectors can really, you know, collect and uh, dealers can, you know, have this faith that there's, hey, there's experts there. I went to CGC. And I can tell you, you know, their facility is top notch. Uh, they have hired graders from Beckett and, uh, you know, I think even PSA. They have uh, really just a wide range of knowledge, great training. Uh, Matt Quinn over there is obviously heading the, the, the grading side for the CGC part and for the Pokemon and the Magic side. But they have dedicated you know grading stuff for the, the the sports car grading too which they've also invested lots of money and training you know for that so I got to say the, the 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 personnel is huge right you know you have to get industry experts and uh, fresh blood into the industry so I have every confidence but if your argument if your argument is that I don't like CGC because of the fact that these cases this look I don't know paper paper and stuff I'll tell you right now, this little metal thing that Becca has here, that's not really gold. Nor is this really silver, palladium, or metal. This is just, I don't know, probably just ribbed metal sheet paper that's not even, like, valuable. It's just something, you know, I guess CGC could have done that. They could have done that. But, you know, PSA, you know, they're using paper labels. But they're like, for example, their PSA 9 1952 Tops Mantle. Sold for five point two million dollars. Does it really matter what? Does the label have to be like made out of like diamonds for you to accept the company? I think what it comes down to is the hardest part about this conversation for Magic is that any company that has a large amount of investors, uh, collectors, 
I mean investors, collectors, right, into that brand. Beckett owns such a lion's share right now of that market. Such a lion's share. Yeah, you do have some PSA, PSA cards, right? Like kind of like this. These are older ones. They don't have the new PSA uh, little seal in there that are power nine. Again, all on eBay auction. You can bid right now. These Beckett ones here, right? You can't really tell the difference, but it's more about the serial numbers, right? The age of it. But people like buying the Beckett cards. And it's going to be one of the, the hardest part is there's a couple of factors. One is the set registry. The set registry for Beckett and PSA is huge. Um, they have the population reports also. CGC is starting that process. I was told by Matt Quinn uh, from CGC that they are obviously compiling data, building that. And that that's going to be a definitive resource that's going to change the market. If CGC and the resources from Blackstone, you know, helping out, really help uh, produce and accelerate this. Uh, so you're not going to vacuum right now, are you, sir? Are you, are you vacuuming right now? Or? Okay, okay. Yeah, sorry. I'm in a hotel. Um, if they put the resources into uh, getting this population report, all that out, and making it a quality, not buggy, not buggy uh, one, it could really help make it, you know, a, a big thing. And also that validates what I was saying about, you know, a real grading company that actually has a, a, a really great population report, uh, a, a easy, easy to use user, user interface, you know, not something that's, you know, cheesy wheezy. The, the first PSA uh, pop reports and the, uh, the set registry was pretty cheesy. It was just like just an Excel spreadsheet look, right? So. I, I gotta say, the technology has changed. If, if the resources go in for CGC, I'm gonna be really happy with that. I don't think people understand that how powerful when you have more resources backing you, you're able to go to more conventions. This is another thing I was gonna discuss, was when you go to like the National, PSA and Beckett have the largest booths. PSA usually has the biggest booth. And understand that if CGC comes in with a decent sized booth, decent sized resources, um, you know, people trying them out. And then you have these retail customers who are just walking in and saying, hey, I'll try it. It's, it's lower cost. The cases look pretty, uh, you know, uh, pretty much the same. Uh, the, you guys have the comic book grading, which is huge, the, the bigger than PSA, Beckett combined, whatever the hell it is. Uh, you, you know, they have support. And the other thing PSA also has uh, that they have is like the kind of the uh, a lot of the fan, the, the social media guys, fanfare, stuff like that. So if you get like influencers who are pushing the marketing and the trust of CGC a lot more, um, that's big time. And even like, it doesn't have to be direct, direct can be indirect, like Logan Paul wearing his BGS 10 first edition Charizard. Uh, it's like a million dollar card on his neck when he's fighting Floyd Mayweather, right? That is marketing towards the brand of Beckett without even having to. I don't think he paid him anything, obviously. So that shows you that, hey, you know, if this kind of money goes into the marketing, which I don't doubt it won't, I, I don't doubt it will not, uh, I think the brand will keep growing and growing. And I, I, I wouldn't doubt, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this right out of the gate. I think CGC will definitely surpass PSA in grading of cards. Uh, very, very quickly. Uh, main reason why, like I said, is PSA's pricing is completely off base in terms of the higher end cards. And turnaround times have been hard. Now, I will say that I like what about PSA is that they are, like Steve Sloan, the president, is announcing, hey, you know, different uh, milestones of timeline stuff they're trying to hit. So that's really good. And I think the transparency, depending, I, I'm not sure about CGG's company. I, what I like about it is like, Matt Quinn is, you know, a face of the company. He is speaking about it in a very professional way. You're going to enjoy the video when we, he opened that alpha starter. And I got to say, man, like if we have that kind of transparency with CGC, I think it's going to be very hard for uh, PSA to, to, to catch up, you know, because PSA is not very, uh, very strong already in the, in the, in the magic market. I think CGC will end up trumping them. Uh, sooner than you think. Now, next question would be, when is Beckett going to be trumped? Now, there would have to be a, tr and I'm not going to dis discuss that in this video. I'm going to end it here with this last thought point is that how can you really trump Beckett 
And the only way I can think about it is that the thing is you have so many collectors who have put millions and millions of dollars into the Beckett cards from cryptocurrency to trades to deals to whatever, right? They've made these set registries off Beckett graded cards. How in the world can you actually have this, this conversion, right? To CGC, if they, assuming they trump PSA. And my one thing I will leave you with this with for this Finance Friday is that if people are fed up with Beckett enough where their consistency of the grading, their times, and the lack of transparency, the lack of personal touch, which is huge for grading. I think personal touch makes you feel like, hey, you know, we, we have a rep that responds to you. Uh, we have, you know, the customer service staff that responds to you, that cares about you. If enough of that happens, and if any kind of high profile things happen where they have the right marketing with CGC, and they start grading with CGC instead of other grading brands, I can see that, especially with a small market like Magic compared, Magic's comparative pretty small than the volume of like a Pokemon or whatever, right? Not, not, obviously sports card is huge, it's a huge juggernaut. But I think that with Magic, I can see CGC taking over if num some of the big collectors are like, man, I really don't like the like I see a CGC is growing and their grading is more consistent. They, they, they looked at some of their Beckett cards like, man, these Beckett cards were just not graded right. I submitted these cards for $250 a card and here I am getting a nine on corners or eight five on corners when before they were all nines and nine fives because there's a little flip and they don't understand the grading of the corners. But CGC does. And that's what I think would really change the market. If there was enough top end collectors, influencers, that type of thing, that could be a game changer and, and CGC will take over as the market leader for magic. So anyway, what I, I hope you guys, I, ho I hope you guys really enjoy the video. If you have any questions, any thoughts, I want to hear in your comments below. Uh, I, I, this topic is not over. There's a lot more to come. And again, if you want to bid on any of these cards uh, on eBay auction, I appreciate you guys watching the all these cards here, eBay auction, don't miss out. Even if they're backwards, don't miss out. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Happy Friday, happy 4th of July weekend, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Hey guys, it's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. I'm here to share with you more about our deck and set collector fulfillment service. The deck fulfillment service caters to the player. And what that basically means is if you are a player looking to fulfill your old school magic deck, a uh, certain power nine or key pieces in your vintage deck or dual lands in your legacy deck, we have the inventory and the resources to help you fulfill your needs. Next, we have the set collector fulfillment service. This really caters more towards the collector. Oftentimes I've been asked, hey Dan, can you help me find this specific graded card for your, this set? Or Dan, can you find me these 20 cards left in my beta set? It doesn't matter what you're looking for, even if it's like every single Sarah Angel possible out there, I can help you out. My resources and extensive network in Magic the Gathering, I was able to help thousands of clients all over the world fulfill their needs. I've made it my mission at VintageMagic.com to be your one-stop shop for all your collector needs. For any significant item or collection, we're able to travel anywhere in the world to meet you. The reason why my clients love this service because it saves you time. What happens is collectors and players often search all over online or vendors and they never find exactly what they're looking for. By going to us, we are the only one-stop shop who can help you with your needs. Using our service gets you exactly what you want and saves you time and money. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com.